happening, man? It's like, you know, I've been debating on whether to do this video or not for a while. And I figured, you know what, I might as well come in on the heels of the um, video reaction that I, I did earlier today. And, you know, I got a little, uh, some hate from it, you know, the one called Fuck Me in the Ass Because uh, I Love Jesus. So it was a parody of how certain uh, Christians straddle the line. You know, they, they pick and choose or they find loopholes or, well, Bible didn't exactly say this, so it didn't exactly say that. You know, and I've heard the same thing about masturbation and a bunch of other things in the Bible. And it picked fun at it, and it could be, could be considered blasphemous or sacrilegious or whatever have you. Excuse me. And I have some people say, oh, I'm unsubscribing. And I'm like, okay. Uh -huh. uh, and the reason why I have this, um, I feel this way is because I'm not religious anymore. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm not religious anymore. Okay. This video could get long. So for those of you that like to hear my long, drawn out thought process videos, then this is for you. I don't know where it's going to start and where it's going to end, okay? So, someone were to say to me, okay, Tyrone, well, why aren't you religious anymore? In my specific life experience, um, I grew up Christian, one of many, many, many Christian denominations. Some would say it wasn't Christian because Christians are always fighting over who's right, which is something that I absolutely despise about Christian denominations and about religion period is that they're always fighting over who's right killing wars all these things because our God is right and your God is wrong and like with Christians I would see the different denominations and they a lot of them a lot of times they would have so many similarities and these these little minute or even big differences is what would park the sea with them, so to speak. And, you know, every other religion is of the devil, but ours is correct. And I would see they would get really nasty about how they spoke about other religions. Yet, the great teacher in their Bible would tell them to show love toward the enemy. Or to people that are ignorant, don't understand. But they, the way they talk about them, they talk about them hatefully. Um... My specific reason, which led to a few other reasons for leaving the religion, and I'm not no damn apostate or any of that stuff, so I don't want to hear none of that. Oh, and by the way, I know, I absolutely know, because when I used to do these videos a little while ago, when I would do these more drawn out religious thought process videos, people would come to my, you know, video, oh, I'm going to pray for you, and Matthew, this says that, and uh-huh, okay. Just letting you know, I'm not going to read them because I've already read them. If they would have helped me, they would have helped me a long time ago. There are specific reasons why I don't, I'm don't. i not religious anymore. One of them being that I did my own research. Okay, I didn't do what my pastor said or what my elder said what my deacon, my reverend, my priest, I did my own research, connected my own dots. And I would find that the dots that I were told were connected were not. I verified things and I was just like, oh boy. And you wanna talk about something scary? You wanna talk about totally believing and knowing that you've got quote unquote the truth or you're in the right religion and you see these things and you're like oh wait 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 something is wrong this is not right and there were many 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 reasons and I would tell anyone anyone that is really religious if you have your doubts if you have your questions it's okay to doubt and ask questions and do your own verification so that you know what you're being taught is the truth, just like with anything else. If you doubted that two plus two was four, how about you get out two paper clips, 
get out two more paper clips, and then count them together and make sure it's four. And that's all that I did. Okay, I'm not talking trash on any religions or anything because I know that this line of untruth runs through many different religions. And, you know, I see so much dirt dealing and lies and debauchery just to, you know, like, you know, I, I dated this one girl um, who was very religious and she acted up much more than I did. I mean, I didn't even kiss a girl until I was 18. She was fucking and sucking in high school, you know, already. <laughs> Getting into all types of fucking trouble, drinking and so, all that shit. But she was in church on Sunday. Yeah. There's so many people that straddle that line. Like in the video, when I was talking about, oh, um, well, but the Bible doesn't specifically say you can't have anal sex or whatever it is, how it's worded. Because guess what? There's a thousand different Bibles out there, right? Not literally speaking, but there's many different uh, translations of the Bible. And one says this, and one says that. And we use this one, and we use the King James we use the New World Translation. We use the New Living. We use this. We use that. And it's all been lost. And I, never got, I never got that as to where, you know, like some people say, oh, well, King James. Well, I don't understand what exactly makes the King James the absolute truth, the, the, the perfect translation. I've read that it has many mistakes that were never corrected. But wait a minute. If it's God's word, then wouldn't his Holy Spirit see to it that it was translated perfectly? I mean, he is God, right? I don't know. I just think he would want his people to have the truth. You know, and then I look at religious holidays. And at first, yeah, it came from being a Jehovah's Witness because a lot of things Jehovah's Witnesses just don't celebrate. But like I said, I had my own issues with the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses. There were certain things that I found didn't line up. And that was the reason why I left. But, and you look at other Christian denominations. Think about Christmas, for example. For a religion that's based on a God that hates lies and hates liars, they celebrate Christmas, which is an absolute lie. Their God, son or their God, how, whichever denomination you're speaking to, um, was not born in the winter. All the biblical scholars agree he was not born in the winter. Yet, they accept that lie and celebrate it on December 25th. Why would you do that? Are you following man's traditions, which is what the Bible tells you not to do? You should be following what God says, not man's traditions. But so many things are steeped in tradition, man's tradition, not your Lord and Savior, his words in the Bible, but man's traditions. That's just one thing. Like when I, and, and, and I, I, let me tell you something. I still have Jehovah's Witness friends. The majority of my family is Jehovah's Witness. I love them all and I have no problem with them. They have their beliefs. I have mine now, but, um, you know, I was you know, approached by several different um, denominations, other, you know, certain Muslims, Hebrew Israelites, you know, oh, well, we got the truth. We got the truth. Well, I already see what you're doing and I already see what you're doing. So I know you guys don't have the truth. I, I, I just know you don't, you know, and I thought Christians were supposed to be like neutral, right? Weren't you supposed to be neutral as far as politics and war? Yet, the most religious people in the world join the military, right? So I look at that, okay, okay, they're all joining the military and they're all killing people overseas and invading different countries and they're doing this and that. Okay, so that can't be the right denomination right there because we're supposed to be neutral, correct, from what the Bible says, at least that I've noticed. Um, another thing, like... When you look at where we get our translations from, and you know, they're copies of copies of copies, like there's no original scrolls or anything like that left. And if, I mean, you just look at the 
this the idea that you know man was inspired to write through God. I really truly believe that if there is an all-knowing good God, that he personally would have made sure that his perfect translation would have been copied perfectly and preserved and there would be no dispute and his people would be known because you know like I always hated the fact that you know like the Bible says basically that the the you know it it rains on the just and the unjust I never liked that because and then this is just just me thinking out loud I'm sure a ton of you want to have Bible studies with me, Quran studies, and all this other stuff studies with me. But right now, I am religioned out. So don't approach me because I don't want to hear it. I'm on a different type of journey right now. And if somehow I come back to God, I will. Okay? But what I'm saying is like, um, damn, I lost my train of thought. Um, you know, like, uh, I was gonna say. Hmm. Oh, so I'm I'm thinking about the um, like the Hebrew Israelites. There's the whole discrepancy of whether, um, you know, that the okay the original Israelites were black. Okay, that's actually pretty significant considering world history and the way things are taught in the mind uh, programming that goes on uh, today on television and news and just all these different things it's just it's very interesting you know some people say like I said the, 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 the Israelites were black they were not white folks okay there's that I remember I was approached by them on the street one time and um, I remember I was with Sarah at the time and I remember um, I stopped and I listened to them. She was like, don't stop. I don't want, you know, they're always preaching hate. And I, my, at this time, this was my first time to ever seeing them. So I was like, oh, just, just, just hold on, babe. Let me, let me, you know, see what they have to say. <clears throat> so the guy was, he started kind of getting, ramping up into talking shit. And I, he could see that I was with Sarah. And uh, he had said something about, um, you know, the Asian woman to have you praising Buddha. The Indian woman to have you praising Shiva, and the white woman to have you praising Satan. Ah, 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 ah. They started laughing, and she she stormed off, told me "fuck you," walked off crying. And this is what I said to him, and I said, you know, you're reading from the Bible, and the Bible preaches love. And what did you just do with her? That was hate. And he started. This is just a. Ah, uh, bro, bro, nah, wait, brother, come back, come back. See, because he knew he was wrong. I knew that if this was a real true religion, there's no way they would be preaching that much hate and talking like that on the street. As far as what the Bible says, I'm only really familiar with what the Bible says, you know. So I called up to her, and she's like, fuck you, this and that, you know, she, her damn temper. And I said, um, did you stay to hear what I said? And she's like, well, what did you say? And I told her what, what happened and how the other people, because everybody shut up once I said what I said. Nobody was laughing anymore. No one was clapping anymore, you know, because they were laughing and clapping like, yeah, ha, ha, you made the white girl storm off, you know, fuck that interracial couple type of shit. Or, or you just schooled that brother. Now he probably going to get rid of her, her Satanist ass, you know, whatever it is, white devil, you know, all that. And um, I told her, she was like, you did? You said that? And I was like, yeah. So next time, stay to hear what I have to say. You know what I mean? Don't just walk off on me like that. Let me see how I'm doing all the time. Yeah. So, you know, and another thing about religion, and I get a feeling that what I was going to say earlier was not just the Hebrew Israelites. I had something else to say. But um, another thing is, um, you know, this is on some red pill shit, but if you look at religions... They're a form of control. Not that man shouldn't have self-control or a form of control. But if you look at them, they can be manipulated. They can be used for mass control, right? Like when you look at The Matrix. I remember reading that The Matrix was one of the smartest movies ever made, and they were surprised that it was made. 
And remember when Neo came back from seeing the architect, which could be considered Illuminati. I know. That's a whole different video. He said the one Jesus, which he represents in that movie. Some people say he actually represents Satan if you look at certain videos, but we're going to go with him being a Jesus symbol. Um, he said the one was just another form of control. Remember when he told um, Morpheus that? Morpheus like, I don't believe that. Remember that? What if it is? Remember in the book of Eli? When he was like, you know, like, you know, like what do you want this book for? He says, it's not just a book. It's a weapon. Remember that? Interesting, isn't it? And I'm not saying, oh, no, I'm not religious because oh, you want to do whatever you want. Like some people... Tell atheists, oh, you're you're an atheist because you want to do what you want. You don't want to have any rules in your life. And maybe there's something like that, but I don't believe that all atheists are like that. Either. I've met atheists and, and Christians, and sometimes one's really good, one's really bad. Sometimes the other one's really good, the other one's really bad. There are good people and bad people on the planet. Some of the worst people you'll ever meet on the planet are, uh, and most despicable people are the most religious. And some of the nicest people on the planet or the people that don't have any faith, they just believe in goodwill toward all men, that type of thing. So, you know, it's just when, like I said, I did my own digging. And when you first see something not connect, it can be really scary. You know, a lot of um, religious people, especially Christians, because I, I know Christians, you know, it, it's... Uh, I remember Mike Epps made a joke during a stand-up, and he had said, uh, "I got." He said, "He said I got to turn my life over to God, but I got to get this money first. <laughs> and I started laughing. I was like, "But you know, they just be acting like that, and it's true." And what that points to is kind of like how people, um, how people feel that they know the truth and they know the true road to God but they feel like they need to do other things before they can get their life right you know I never really understood like I get it because you, you live in this evil world and you know yeah but you gotta get this money first so you feel better then you can finally turn yourself over to God right okay so the other thing I was going to say was how people how the rain how yeah it rains on the just the unjust and I always didn't like that because there were examples in the Bible of people being truly protected by God in specific instances not all the time but in specific instances and it's just my total belief here this is just my belief that I'm speaking of right now I personally believe that if there is a good loving all-knowing God out there that truly cares that his people his people every minute of the day would be absolutely untouchable they would not have to give their lives die in these horrific ways whether it be nailed to a stake whether it be racked and pulled and beheaded and all these sick hangings and all these different things that happen because of religion, his people would be totally untouched. That is my personal belief. I'm like thinking to myself, like if I am following the true God, what, why don't he protect me? I don't understand this. Like I understand why would I have to give up my life, you know, for what I believe in. I understand, like if I've already made a dedication, like I believe that you are the true God, why do I have to die? Why do I have to be tortured? Why does my family have to be hurt? You know, I think it would be the coolest thing. And maybe cool isn't the right word, but I think it would be the greatest thing in the world if you were in a religion and you were just totally prosperous. I mean, like, because God can read your heart, right? So if you are just a, a, just a fabulous human being and... You do everything that God asks of you in the scriptures and this and that. I don't see why you should have any turmoil in your life personally. I really don't. I think everything you, it, it should, 
seem as if you have the Midas touch, as if you have totally been blessed by God. One story that I always hated in the Bible, and I hate it till this day, is the story of Job. This has always driven me nuts. I have always hated this story. So, you become this pawn, this is toy, you become the object of a wager between a challenging, spiteful, finger-pointing son and his father. You have children. You have land. You have wealth. You have a wife. You have status. You have power. And that's all taken from you within the blink of an eye. And some would argue that that was a test. But here's my thing. Here's the one thing that always... Look, and I can talk about a, a bunch of other things in the story of Job that bothered me, but this was the main one. And I don't even have children yet. I don't even have children yet. But I got a dog. And I know how much I love him, even though he stays with his mother right now. I know how much I love him. And some of y'all may laugh at that. Some of you may say it's not the same. But I can empathize and understand what it would be like to have a child. And if I were to have 10, 15 daughters and sons, and you were to let that, that son take my children away from me and say, hey, you know what? Because you stayed close to me and you didn't give up, I'm gonna give you 15 more. I'm gonna say no. I want the 15 back that you let take, let him take from me. That's what I want back. I never understood that. That story drives me wild. I cannot stand that part. Oh, well, he gave him more. No, no. You all know that have children, what it's like to know each and every one of them and for them all to be killed in an accident and if God came to you and said I'll give you five more children what would you say oh you're gonna bring back the ones that no 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 I'm gonna give you five new ones I oh, don't worry about that I'm gonna bring you five no, no, I don't want five new ones. I want the ones that I lost. I had personal relationships with them. I knew them. I knew them. This one was the apple of my eye. This one was my heart. This one was my little man. This one was my little girl. This one was my little piggy. You know what I mean? You, I. That's what I'm saying. Like, There's a lot of things that I just see throughout the Bible that just are not right to me. And Jesus died in the Bible. It was a flood. And it said that the great ones, right? I'm paraphrasing here, came into the city. So you're saying that people that died in the past were resurrected. Essentially zombies, in a way, came into the city. And I remember that I heard some people try to explain it like, oh, well, you know, no, it was a flood, so the... So, you know, the bodies came out of tombs and floated into... that. That's what it was. Uh-huh. Well, that's what it would have said. Okay? They made it... The Bible makes it sound like these people came in and say, like, they were walking. And people were very afraid. No, they thought zombies don't exist. Zombies ain't real. That's demonic. Zombies are demonized. This and that. But, well, your Bible says that zombies did exist. So, which one isn't? You know? And... All the fighting over whether Jesus is God, whether he's part of God, whether he's actually his son, whether he's not his son, whether they're one and the same. It's just really weird to me, you know, like, you know, he has, he creates a perfect couple and, um, you know, 
they mess up. So now all of a sudden they die. But I always thought it was weird that it was the tree of knowledge of good and bad. And I understand they opened their eyes and all of a sudden they knew what was right and wrong, which I thought was weird. I thought it was a good thing to have knowledge and know what was right or wrong. But I could see other people saying, well, now, you know, you're supposed to trust God and what's right and wrong. And it's because they didn't listen to him. They didn't obey him. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. But so then... He, t he enacts a plan at that moment to bruise Satan in the head. And Satan would bruise him in the heel. And it took thousands of years to happen. And I'm born a virgin and, and he dies. And why have thou forsaken me? And I was just like, I understand why this takes so long. You know what I mean? Like, why does God take so long? For his plans to happen, that 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 that's a ma massive irritant to me too. Why does it take so long? You could you could have proved all your points. You're God, okay? You could have proved all your points and taken care of. Oh, it's not of, for you to understand because you're a human being, Tyrone. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that that agitates me too. Just a time limit, and forever, forever. Jesus has been coming back. There have been so many preachers and quote-unquote prophets that have told us when God is coming back. And it has never happened yet. Some people argue it's already happened. Jesus is sitting on his throne already. Maybe it is true. <clears throat> um, but I'm always hearing that. Jesus is coming back. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I understand. Why is Jesus the only true God? Why is Christianity the only true route to 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 everlasting life? You know, some people say religion is man's way of figuring out, his sorting out his problems. You know, about life it gives him peace of mind. You know, but who's to say the Quran isn't true? Who's to say the Buddhist isn't true? I mean, I've read some of Buddhist teachings. And very, very wise teachings. Very wise teachings. You know, um, Confucius. You know, just, just a lot of different things I've read, and I'm like, you know, it's funny how a lot of religions are just so they have this line of of common. Uh, I don't want to say truth, but a common theme that runs through them all. I've noticed, you know. Yeah, and I, I know the explanations. Oh, well, no, you know, no, okay, if you're Christian, I Satan put out all these other fake religions to confuse you. I, I've heard that one before, I know. But what if I grew up somewhere else? You know, what if I grew, I didn't grow up in a nation that brought over slaves and forced Christianity on them? What if I grew up somewhere where Christianity wasn't prevalent? You know, um, I don't understand what makes Christianity the, the end all be all, you know, and some people just give you a blanket statement, this broad stroke, without thinking about the, 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 what they actually say. Like, they'll say, well, because the Bible says, well, I understand that you're saying, yeah, because that's what you believe. But how do you, you know, there are, <laughs> I believe there are around anywhere from 20 to 30, 20 to 50,000 different religions and denominations out there. 20 to 50,000, I believe. That's a lot. And guess what? Everybody's got it right. So, I'll end this video, I'll end this video saying this. I know my heart. And if there is a God, He knows my heart. He knows that I seek truth. So, if there is a God, He will allow me to find truth and everlasting life or whatever it is that actually exists out there. He knows my heart. He knows what I want. And or she or the universal power or whatever you want to call it. Okay? They know me. They know my heart. And they will find a way for truth to be revealed to me. Okay? So this is my video, just me talking about 
several different issues that I have with religion. Um, I don't hate religion. I do hate certain things that have happened. You know, millions of people, millions upon millions upon millions have died over just believing differently. It's just, it's, it's really sick, you know. But I know not everything in religion is bad. I do know this. I know it's, it's two different you know, sides of the coin. There's good and bad. Killing being done, but yet they'll give to charity. You know what I mean? It's, you know, like I said. So this has tired me out. This is my, I'm emotionally tired right now. So this is my last video of the night. Um, please don't. I mean, please, I mean, I don't need you to come to the channel and preach and preach and preach and preach because, like I said, I'm on a different path. And if it's my time to discover truth, I will. But I really highly doubt that any of you out there have it, okay? Um, still happy, Tyrone. Still happy individual. It's just my religion journey is at a halt right now. I'm just trying to become a better person, period, myself. I'm trying to become a better person, live a happy, prosperous, you know, just wonderful life. Live my dreams, travel, meet different cultures, meet different people, make people laugh, educate people. Just That's just what I want to do. That's it right now. And like I said, God knows my heart. He will allow me to find him. Okay? That's it. One million subscribers. Woo!